Data Citizens. Welcome to my session, Practical Tips to Create an Enterprise-Wide Data Catalog. My name is Brenda Belter. I work at CoreLogic, a data company. My background includes product management, technical writing, and data governance. But my passion for the last eight years has been all about metadata. I created the Enterprise Data Catalog at CoreLogic to help employees discover, analyze, and understand the vast amount of data in its possession. While I've been collecting metadata for years, my journey down this path really took off when we purchased Calibra. So let's get started. What is a data catalog? It's essentially a library or inventory of all your data sets, just like a card catalog of books at the library. So why is a data catalog important? And how can a data catalog help you now? Without a data catalog, you have a huge collection of undefined disparate data sets. No one knows what you have, where it's located, or who to talk to. And with COVID-19, it just got a lot harder to find your data. Working remotely has its advantages and disadvantages, but locating information while remote takes additional time and effort. Communication breakdown is very likely, and getting answers to what seems like simple questions can feel like a large obstacle, especially to a remote worker who is not used to working from home. Consider the scenario of addressing a customer who has a question about data provided in one of your reports or products. You know it exists, but you can't remember where. And because that information is not in a central location, you must search a variety of places, from documents on your computer, email, SharePoint, and even chats, hoping to find the desired information. If you are lucky, your remote coworkers might help you out or have the answer you need. If you had an enterprise-wide data catalog, you could find the information you need quickly. You wouldn't need to rely solely on tribal knowledge, and you could use it to document and ensure compliance with contractual and regulatory obligations. A data catalog can be accessed 24 seven and provides an authoritative single source of truth about your data. So let's create a data catalog. I've come up with five steps to help you build a robust enterprise-wide data catalog at your organization. You can do this. Step one, know thy audience. The first thing you wanna do is gather your requirements. What is it that people wanna know about your data? To do this, you need to find and interview potential users to determine what is needed. These stakeholders will typically be strong data users. And I recommend talking to subject matter experts, data stewards, data scientists, analytical modelers, product managers, and of course, your data governance, legal and compliance teams. Interview them to determine what they care about most and what they would love to be able to find with just a few clicks. Some questions to ask include, what data sets are you most knowledgeable about? How do you find the data you need today? How long does it take to get an answer? This one in particular can help you identify the time wasted looking for the right information, which might prove to be justification for your catalog project. What is it that you typically need to know about our data? And don't forget, who else do you recommend I talk to? Stakeholders will provide you with insights you might not have thought about. Listening to their frustrations, needs, and hopes is great motivation because you're most likely doing this to make things better for them. And it is a great reminder of why you are creating a data catalog in the first place. Here's a tip. During the interview, note the words your stakeholders use to describe the data. This will help you describe the data set using keywords or glossary terms that your users are most familiar with. What we think the data set should be named doesn't always resonate with the terms our end users would call it. Step two, create the catalog. Start your own list 
with known data sets that will form the foundation of your data catalog. You may have uncovered a bunch of data sets through your stakeholder interviews in step one. Work with your chief data officer, subject matter experts, IT or similar departments to find more data sets. The important thing is to keep searching and asking questions. Sometimes the answers will surprise you and often help you locate other data. I found many data sets by simply asking, what other data do you know about? And who's the most knowledgeable about that data? Here's a tip. As you document your data sets, be sure to identify where the data is located or stored, the responsible parties, and who uses it. There were several times I found people describing the same data set, but calling it something different. You don't want to have duplicates in your data catalog if they aren't really duplicates. On the other hand, you might have uncovered true duplicate data sets, and this is yet another opportunity to prove out the value of the data catalog and potentially eliminate duplicate data, which could result in cost savings for your company, as well as ensure duplicate data is not purchased in the future. Identifying what qualifies as a data set can be a challenge. Every organization will have a different interpretation as to what a data set represents. Often your starting point will be a database or collection of data. This is a great way to get started. As you explore the data contained in each database, you might find it contains several different types of data. And this is what I discovered at CoreLogic. Being a data company, our databases are large and can be broken down into multiple subjects. So I listed each of those separately even though they're co-located in one database. I find a subject-oriented data catalog works for data in the cloud too. A database container doesn't always apply in the cloud as data is being ingested and commingled from different sources. And it may not be in a database anymore. However, the list of data sets by subject matter still works. What you use to represent a data set depends upon what type of data you have, how much of it there is, and what makes the most sense for your company. So now that you've created your initial list, you want to make it more meaningful by providing additional context to your data catalog, which leads us to step three, organizing the catalog. Just like a library, you need to identify ways to classify or group your data. If you are cataloging books, you would provide additional context to enable users to find it. In addition to the title and author, you might group it based on subject, genre, or type of material, such as book, magazine, newspaper, etc. It's the same with data sets. You want to classify it in ways that allow your users better context around what is available. They need the ability to search it in different ways so that it will be truly useful for them. To do this, analyze your dataset list and see if there are any high-level subjects or categories to roll the datasets into. For example, CoreLogic primarily has data on property and people. I was able to use that classification to group our datasets into property datasets and people datasets. Additionally, I categorized our datasets into verticals or industries where the data is typically used. For example, a mortgage lender wants different information than an insurance company, although they both want property data. Another way to slice and dice your data sets is to identify who owns or manages the data set. If your data sets are spread out over different business units, this is a great classification method that will also provide some good reporting on who owns and is responsible for what data. And remember when I discussed using subject-oriented data sets? Identifying the database helps pull these data sets together. When you want to see what is contained in an individual database, you simply search that tag. Once you've categorized your data to make it easier to find, you are ready to move on to step four. Step four, connecting the dots. This, in my opinion, is where Calibra really shines. Calibra provides the ability to enhance the data catalog 
by linking data sets to other metadata. The most useful metadata at my company, after the data catalog, are logical data dictionaries. They describe the data in terms that the business can understand. If you don't have any, search for existing layouts, extracts, or user guides as a starting point. And here's my tip. One of the most common complaints is that no one wants to create or maintain the data dictionary. My recommendation, hire technical writers, librarians, or even analysts who love to write. Several years ago, I hired and ran a technical training team that worked with subject matter experts to document our databases. I received praise from my coworkers all the time for these internal data dictionaries because they were so desperately needed and are so valuable even years later. The return on your investment here is huge. In addition to data dictionaries, you can link applicable business terms to your data sets. Glossary terms enable deeper understanding of your data sets. And it helps clarify what is really contained in the data. You should also document allowed or restricted permissions so that a user knows what they can or cannot do with the data. These days, GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, and CCPA, the California Consumer Privacy Act, have made data security and data usage a necessity within our organizations. Identifying the rules that govern your data sets help ensure compliance. And it certainly helps with audits too. Where the data set came from, typically the database, and where the data set is used, products or reports, is another key relationship to document. This allows you to begin your data lineage journey, which is basically the path your data travels throughout your company. Step five, communicate. Don't assume that if you build it, they will come. As proud as I am of our data catalog, it's not useful if only a handful of people know about it. You must advertise and remind users about the data catalog. Teach users how to use Calibra. Get yourself on team meeting agendas, offer lunch and learns, send out newsletters and email blasts. Don't forget to provide real world examples of how the catalog helps solve a problem. Any evidence you can share of successful data catalog experiences will help foster adoption. In conclusion, my key takeaways for creating a data catalog and helping employees find and use your data include identifying stakeholders and interviewing them for requirements, tracking down data sets and creating the initial data catalog, classifying and grouping data sets to improve user search, connecting data sets to other metadata, and then announcements, regular reminders, and user training. Thank you for attending. I hope you found the session useful and gathered some tips that you can put into practice right away. You can do this. An enterprise-wide data catalog is achievable. Should you have any questions or want to follow up, you can find me in the new Calibra user community. Mm -hmm.